not even joking this much, I would prefer Taliban rule in America to this. You want to know why? Because at least if black people were fighting at the airport, they would get their hands cut off. And there would be no guys wearing high heels at flight attendants. Maybe they'd be women in burkas, but wouldn't that be preferable? Hey everybody, Maz Jobrani. You were just watching Nick Fuentes, who uh, is a white supremacist. I didn't know about him at all until my team brought him to my attention. See, I watch this crap so you don't have to, okay? This guy, Nick Fuentes, is upset because Virgin Atlantic has said that they're gonna allow their employees to wear the uniforms that coincide with their gender choice. And Nick Fuentes is upset. First of all, it blows my mind. When I hear that Virgin Atlantic is gonna let their employees dress with a gender that they associate with, I'm like, okay, great. I don't think about it. It doesn't bother me. Nick Fuentes, white supremacist, who, by the way, white supremacists, by definition, are people that are supposed to be upset about other races, saying we're supreme, I'm white, I'm supreme to other races. Now he's concerned about gender issues. What's with white supremacists being upset at everything? Like, pick, pick a lane, dude. Think about it. What would you prefer? Because I know I sound crazy when I say that. I know people say I sound like an insane person. But who's more insane? Like, what is really insane here? Is it insane that we would be under Taliban rule in America and the women would have burqas and, and thieves would get their arms chopped off and blasphemers would get their tongues cut out? Or, or is it more ridiculous that you're going to board an airplane with a mask on, get groped, you have to bring a shampoo in a three-ounce bottle, and then you get on the flight and black people are going to be... What shade of me, bitch? Shade of me, bitch? you, bitch. And then, and then if that wasn't bad enough, a gay man in high heels is going to zoom over in a mini skirt to break it up. Like if that's, that's too much for me. It's too much. I can't take, I can't take it anymore. I can't accept this anymore. I can't take this country. Bring it up. Bring on the Taliban. Anyway, this idiot is upset and he goes, I would rather have the Taliban here than this ability for you know people in America to choose the uniform related to their gender. Um, okay, you know, it's mind-blowing that people on the far right are much closer to the Taliban and other extremist groups in the Middle East than one would imagine. And these guys are goofy until you find out it actually can get dangerous as this clip shows. You know, we used to joke in our gallows humor, people like Andrew and I, that uh, the radicalization of the right, we used to call vanilla ISIS, right? That in other words, it was, just, it was just about radicalization. And what we have to remember is that they're really focused on an image of America, that they don't like this America, the, right, the, the white supremacist groups and the right-wing groups. It's not America, it is this America. It is a diverse America, one in which women uh, are equal, uh, uh, one in which there is diversity, this great replacement that Andrew was talking about. Uh, that sounds very similar to the Taliban. Uh, and so there is a nexus in terms of both the international sentiment of a, of a radicalization or a, a sort of uh, uh, fascism uh, that we see uh, in, the, in the terrorist groups, but that's then repeated by the, the um, uh, members of Congress, as we've heard recently, sort of radicalizing and talking about violence. And then, of course, the right-wing media machine. So... We go from goofy Nick Fuentes to actual white supremacist extremist groups who are taking inspiration from the Taliban to organize and implement their beliefs on a majority of Americans, even though they're a minority. So basically, that's what happened in a lot of places like Afghanistan, in Iran, the country of my birth, a lot of other places where religion has been mixed with politics, you end up with a minority implementing their beliefs and their morals on a majority. And it ain't good. If you want to see how bad it is, just look at all the news of what's going on in Iran right now. The people of Iran are fighting for their freedom. They're being killed by this extreme government, this horrific regime. And that's basically what a lot of white supremacists in this country of America want, is they want to take from the Taliban or the Islamic Republic of Iran and other places where a religious minority has turned around and implemented their beliefs 
by mixing religion with politics and turned their country into the handmaid's tale. That's what they want. If you don't believe me, look at what happened on January 6th when this was going on. Let every adversary against democracy, against freedom, against life, against liberty, against justice, against peace, against righteousness be overturned right now in the name of Jesus. Let justice be done. Let justice be done. Let justice be done. Let we the people have the assurance of a fair and a just election. I thank you for President Trump. I put a hedge of protection around him. I secure his purpose. I secure his destiny. I secure his life, God. And I thank you that he will walk in a holy boldness and a wisdom, God, and that you will go before him. You will be his rear guard and you will go in front of him this day and every day, God. That was Paula White, Donald Trump's spiritual advisor, speaking on January 6, 2021, before the Capitol was stormed. And the words she uses are so biblical and God and it's all about God and people were there that day storming the Capitol praying to Jesus Jesus is on their side it's really cuckoo it's just total cuckoo it's people that are not stable who are looking for a way to say that they're correct they're right I'm right because my God has said I should attack the Capitol my God has said the election was stolen. My God has said, Donald Trump, this womanizing, cheating, lying, stealing human being was sent by God to lead us to victory. It's cuckoo. They all expect the second coming of Jesus. They want a war. They want a civil war. Again, it hap it's the same in Iran. They have a, an imam who's supposed to come back. Uh, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, they all feel that they're being led by God. It's all cuckoo. And the far right is just as cuckoo as the Taliban, is just as cuckoo as the Islamic Republic of Iran. And anybody who is semi-sane needs to wake up and do something, like vote. Please vote, vote, vote. All right, they took away a woman's right to choose they plan to go after LGBTQ. They want to take away the gay, gay marriage rights. They want to go after religious minorities. And they're arguing for other religious things like putting a cross uh, in Maryland uh, as a memorial. I understand memorials, but when it's from the state, now we're starting to mix church and state again, as you see in this video. The ruling is a victory for Amy Carson, who lives with her husband in Maine. They sent their daughter to the same religious high school they attended, Bangor Christian. They say it teaches values that are important in their lives. It's an extension of how we t raise her at the house. Um, the beliefs that the school has are in line with what we have at the home. But because that school provides an explicitly religious education, the Carsons were not eligible to receive tuition money from the state. Maine gives taxpayer money to families who live in areas that don't have public high schools. But the state bans using that public money to send children to schools that offer religious instruction, saying it wants to avoid subsidizing religion. Today, by a vote of six to three, the Supreme Court said that's religious discrimination. Writing for the majority, Chief Justice John Roberts said Maine promotes stricter separation of church and state than the federal constitution requires. So folks, in conclusion, please vote and please pay attention to what's going on in America and please pay attention to what's going on in Iran and in Afghanistan and all over the world. It's not a, it's not a battle between religious and non-religious. I personally, not a very religious person. I respect people to each his own, have your religion Jewish, Muslim, Christian, Hindu, I don't care, good for you. But when you start imposing your religion on others, it becomes authoritarianism versus a democracy, versus choice. And we're headed that way. They're taking away a lot of choices that we should have in this country. They're taking away a lot of rights. They're pushing for those rights. Why? Because Jesus told them to. So wake up, register, Vote, vote sane. Don't mix religion and politics. 
If you want to see where that's going to lead you to, watch the protests going on in Iran right now where people, innocent people are getting killed. Pay attention. Hashtag Mahsa Amini. I'm Maz Jobrani. I'm a comedian. Usually I make you laugh. Now I'm giving you some opinions and some things to think about. Namaste.